Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Acts chapter 1. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Acts, the first chapter. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language a keldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We know almost nothing about Matthias, and we know more than we care to about Judas. We aren't quite sure how Matthias died. Some traditions say it was at the hand of Ethiopian cannibals, others that he was beheaded in Jerusalem. But we know exactly how Judas died in every grisly detail. Acts says more about Judas than Matthias. And then Matthias is never even mentioned again in the Scriptures. Even today's collect, which has been cleaned up for politically correct ears in LSB, once said that Matthias was put into the place of the traitor Judas, right there in the prayer. And so we begged God to preserve his church from false apostles, to abide continually in the teaching of the true apostles, that is, the teaching of Christ himself. It's dangerous to try to scrub the warnings out of Christianity and focus only on the positives. We need only consider the Gospels themselves. They don't hesitate to say that Jesus sent out the eleven, eleven and not twelve, reminding us that Judas is no more. Likewise, our confessions contrast Judas to St. Peter, Saul to King David. Those former men are cautionary tales that contrition and suffering are nothing without faith. It is possible for Christians to stumble. It happens often. And the righteous still cry out for mercy, as the Psalms constantly attest. And when we do stumble, we should not be surprised and caught off guard by it or dashed to pieces by such a negative truth. The very purpose of Christ's death was to win mercy for sinners. Now Judas was cut to the heart. He turned in horror from his sin because of the law of God. But he would not be turned back to Christ. That is why he bore his own punishment instead. He bore a yoke, not Christ's, but a noose. 
and into that Judas-shaped hole Matthias was placed. The lot fell to him, and he was numbered among the apostles. Now it is commonly said that pastors bear the yoke of Christ. Well, if so, then we need to hear the warning of Judas together with this reminder of ordination from Matthias. We should remember our calling along with Jesus' words that we are to take up our cross and follow him. The ministry is a cross. And in our religion, crosses are always good for us. They mortify our sinful flesh. They are the refiner's fire to burn away all of the dross so that the gold may remain and show forth. Crosses conform us to the image of God's Son, and you can see what that looks like. But, just as with Jesus, wherever death is at work in us, preachers, life is at work in our hearers. So it is that some of us kiss the cross on the nape of our stoles as we vest each day. By doing so, we acknowledge both the danger and the power of this ministry, which is not our own. So also, that all of the suffering we may face is for the sake of those to whom we minister. That we would not become puffed up or unfaithful. But even so, let us not make the terrible mistake of Judas's pastors, those evil priests who would not absolve him as they should have, who would not point him to Christ, to their sacrifice for sin, but instead shamefully told him that Judas was to see to it himself. That is false preaching for our hearers and for ourselves. How easy it would be to imagine that we must see to this ministry also ourselves. If we were to do that, we would make our stoles into nooses for us. Dear friends, do not forget what Christ actually said about his yoke. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now this is not a warning or a burdening, but this is the faith-creating word of mercy from Jesus. The cross that we preach is more than suffering and death because of the Lord who was hanged on it. He has seen to it Himself for us. And that means that no sinner even no traitor must bear his own yoke. Christ Jesus has borne it all and has put it to death forever in his cross. If you still wish to find in the invitation to bear the yoke a connection to our office as pastors or to the crosses of any other Christian vocation, then you may only do that in the confidence that your sins are forgiven. His cross sanctifies yours, not the other way around. Indeed, you are Christ's own, which means that in Christ, your labor is not in vain. To this world, Matthias is as forgotten and unknown as we are likely to be. But rightly so, because we do not preach ourselves, but Christ and Him crucified as Lord. Rest easy then, dear saints, because you are known by Him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend Arthur and Linda Just, who serve the Lord in Latin America. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.